Hey guys. Um. Hello. <laughs> Refit of our trial are in progress. Refit continues. Refit continues. And today is going to be about our very, very big, huge decision to make that we haven't made yet, but we're thinking about an electric conversion and what are the pros and cons and what are the options that we have. Let's talk about that. Diesel versus electric today. Who wins? <laughs> Okay guys, so we have basically four major options with some sub options in that regard. Uh, option one, we're staying diesel. So basically this stays, we still have one sail drive, one propeller and one diesel engine that's already here. This is the safest, the cheapest and we're done. The downside of this option is that we're underpowered uh, that we're still uh, spewing out uh, CO2 and, uh, um, and all kinds of other uh, things that uh, diesel burning has to do with. Uh, also, the boat is noisy and it shakes when we're uh, underway under power. Uh, so those are the uh, cons of the solution of staying with uh, mm -hmm. this diesel, right? Uh, so we have option 1A. Uh, which is stay with the current configuration. What One is, B. Please share what is the, uh, the, the engine we have at the moment. Okay, uh, at the moment we have Yanmar 54 and it's, uh, we have bought it new back in 2015 when we were doing the, when we were doing the big rebuild and we have a bit, uh, uh, went a little bit underestimated the needs. Uh, we went from a Volvo 75 to, uh, to a Yanmar 54 and we, uh, we just basically went a little bit too far down. Um, and uh, right now, uh, powering in flat water and no wind is no problem, obviously, but uh, powering into a 30 knot headwind mm -hmm. is uh, a significant issue. Mm -hmm. um, so going forward, it would be good to go with plan 1B, which means possibly coming back to our old engine, which we still have here. <laughs> Yeah, because we didn't sell it. We didn't sell it. It's been sitting in a garage for the last six years. Yeah, we kept it here so, in Poland. So that's a plan. So that's plan one B. I'm calling. I'm calling it one. So plan one is basically diesel. A is Yanmar. B is Volvo, which is uh, much bigger, uh, twenty horsepower more, mm -hmm. and a corresponding sail drive and a mm -hmm. corresponding bigger propeller. And um, so we need to just add. I'm here just behind the camera that most of the time we just uh, sailed and uh, used the motor. So yes, and hence we... That was, it wasn't the issue that we have on the power engine because it was only two situations that we felt that the, the better engine, the more power yep. would be better. Correct. Uh, Anya is absolutely correct in, the, in, in this, that, that we do sail a lot uh, by percentage. It's, a lot more, it's more than 90% for sure. Uh, hence, the, uh, the need for a big engine really is more of an emergency option than something that we need on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, having said that, we clocked 55,000 miles in, what, six uh, years, and we only put about 2,000 miles on the engine. So that should give you an idea of how little gets used. And quite admittedly, part of it was for charging the batteries when we didn't have enough solar panels. Anyway, we mm -hmm. can go on and on with this one. Uh, so those are the two options with uh, remaining with uh, standard, typical diesel power. Option two, we take one of the existing engines, either Yanmar or Volvo, and converting into a lar large DC generator, uh, 48 or 96 volts, and create a hybrid drive with two electric engines. And I want to show you what happens when we go electric. And that applies to option two, three, and four. And I'll tell you what the options two, three, and four, but they're all electric. At least they're all involved electric uh, mm -hmm. motors. Mm -hmm. uh, Would you like so to add the, the status of our generator? Because in, play, in plan A, 
should we leave our generator on a boat or just sell it? Because we still got this domestic generator. In, in plan A, we're selling the generator. Selling, yes. okay. okay. So because currently what we have on, uh, on board, uh, or on board or at our disposal is, like I already said, the Volvo 75 horse, the Yanmar um, uh, 54 horse, and we also have a, uh, and we also have a Dometic 3K uh, generator that's finally getting fixed after uh, after some time. Um, and uh, so the plan is this: all the other options, but option one, involve uh, uh, electric motors, and we have yet to choose the manufacturer. We are down to few. We would like to uh, stick to one, most likely stick to one that does not have a um, uh, sail drive. That is a, basically a direct drive, either from inside via a shaft or from the outside fully enclosed uh, motor uh, that drives directly into pr propeller. Uh, we kind of like the simplicity of that option uh, and uh, hence the reliability but also the fact that you don't have any losses in, on the gear system. Uh, so the idea is to place two uh, electric motors about this, uh, in about this location on the AMAS. We're currently under the AMA, which is the outer hull, and we would do exactly the same thing on the other side of the boat. So at this point, our boat would become like a catamaran when it comes to powering uh, under, uh, under motor. Uh, we could turn the boat this way easily, which cannot be done right now with a single uh, with a single diesel. So we gain extreme, extremely uh, good maneuverability comparing to what we have at the moment. We basically can turn around uh, around our own axis in on the spot like any other catamaran uh, twin engine catamaran can. Mm -hmm. um, so this is definitely a, a, a plus. The other plus is reliability. Not only ele electric engines tend to be more reliable than diesel, at least that's my impression, safe for the rest of the systems, and this is a whole another discussion. Uh, but also, uh, we are going from one single system, whether diesel or electric, to two completely separate systems. So if we do have a situation where a single engine that we have right now fails, and we're in, in a situation where, we're, let's say, we're in a channel where we have rocks on both sides, right? and we have a side uh, a, a, a wind from the side. And then obviously this is a, a situation which is very hard to, uh, to save the boat from, from damage. Uh, whereas if we have twin engines, whether they, being, uh, whether they be diesels, diesels or, or electric, it is uh, hard, hard to conceive a situation, it's almost inconceivable to have both absolutely independent separate systems to fail at the same time. So the idea between, between twin system is reliability and safety. Uh, that if one fails, we can still power out on single engine, right? And um, if the boat has any kind of a forward speed, having, a, having a, mm, a motor on one side is not a problem because the rudder can compensate for the, for the fact that the boat wants to turn being pulled from more from one side than the other. So that's not a problem, for those of you who don't know this. Uh, so that's option uh, two, uh, which is converting, uh, 2A is converting a Yanmar, or 2B converting the Volvo into a large DC generator and placing two uh, electric motors on the side. In this case, we don't need much ba many batteries because uh, we don't need much uh, autonomy. In this case, we can, it's almost like a hybrid drive, which can drive for maybe a few minutes on the, on the, on the battery. But then after that, basically, uh, a diesel kicks in and starts to directly feed the required power, electrical power, into the motors, um, uh, electrical motors to, to go on. Um, option, so that was 2A and 2B, Yanmar and Volvo. Uh, option three, we get rid of both diesels and uh, save the, uh, the uh, generator, which we have still, uh, and create an option with more batteries, which gives us some uh, reasonable autonomy under just battery power. But uh, uh, we also extend that autonomy by placing, by putting a, a small generator, right? Obviously, small generator is, is not going to give us a, a non-stop autonomy. Um, we cannot go on and on and on. 
because the, the electric drives obviously take a lot more than a 3K uh, generator. Uh, option 3B is to sell that generator and get a larger generator that would not necessarily uh, create a hybrid system, but would be big enough to, uh, in conjunction with the solar panels, uh, which supposed to, we're, by our account, it should be about six to seven kilowatts, in conjunction with solar, with, uh, solar panels and uh, some uh, reasonable uh, battery capacity, we should be able to drive at uh, low speeds uh, nearly continuously. Uh, so that's an option 3B. And I will show you where we can place the, uh, uh, the, the generator where it used to be and what, we're, what we have at our disposal when it comes to space. So let me, uh, let me invite you inside the, the engine room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're in the cockpit and I want to show you, this is actually really easy access that's available right now where we pulled out the old generator. And it's Don't look at the mess. Surface. Don't look at the mess. It's all about... <laughs> War zone is on. Okay, so if you can look down, maybe even from this side, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll show you what's going on. So this is our existing Yanmar, right? And this is the option 1A. This just stays here, right? Uh, we had the, we had the uh, shelf here that would house the, uh, the generator on top of it. Um, so where were we? Option uh, three. four. Uh, four. Mm -hmm. Okay, option no, option three. We're, we're staying with just a generator, right? So we would have all this space because there's no more engine, remember, right? There's no more engine. We have all of a sudden a large space under the salon where we can make storage for batteries because normally we got uh, normally we have tank. a large diesel tank, tank 500 mm -hmm. liter tank, yeah. right? So all of a sudden we are out with this. So there is no 250 kilograms of, of iron, uh, including the sail drive and the prop. We're probably looking close to the 300 kilograms plus the 500 kilograms worth of uh, diesel and the fuel system. Probably about eight, 900 kilograms is out of, out of the boat, right? So that leaves us plenty of space to create, uh, uh, to put batteries back on, probably with some savings on weight-wise. Uh, obviously, we don't normally cruise with a full uh, fuel tank. So that's so, sort of a consideration, right? But if we cross an ocean, obviously we put a fuel tank, full fuel tank, right? So those are the considerations. And I'm telling you all this because we'd like to invite you uh, for comments, because we are absolutely open to any suggestions at this point. Uh, we, like we said, we're staying here for the winter just to have the time to make a very well educated and informed decision so that we don't regret it afterwards because it's a huge decision. Um, so coming back to option three, uh, B. Or four, or five. Or, or four. <laughs> right. No, three was basically saving, uh, saving so three A was keeping our old 3K generator, which is obviously very small. So that our, so our, if we turn it on, it extends our autonomy, but not greatly, just slightly. Option B is selling that and buying a larger, uh, maybe 10, maybe 15, maybe 20K uh, generator, which obviously significantly extends our autonomy. And with the solar panels and with the uh, uh, slower speeds, possibly turns into a continuous uh, power feed, right? That's option 3B. Um, that could create some significant power uh, weight savings. If we do go with a 20K generator, then it's a different story because then we're back into uh, lots of weight, um, uh, which rivals the weight of the, the actual uh, main diesel engine. And uh, then it's only a question of how big of a diesel tank we're, we're putting back in. What I am in love with, but I am not sure that I am technically uh, ready to make this decision is option four, which means all this is gone, including the generator, and we become all electric, 100% green. Se six to seven kilowatts worth of solar panels, uh, large battery bank that can provide at least 
few hours worth of full power uh, autonomy under both uh, uh, electric drives. And um, that's about it. So what are the pros and cons of that situation? Well, the pros are obvious. It's very ecological. There's no diesel here. There's no oil. There's no complicated uh, um, systems, right? Uh, at least not engine-wise. Um, it's quiet. It's completely quiet. It's maintenance-free, at least supposed to be, because those that's what uh, electric motors are about. Uh, there are obviously still issues, you know, it's, a, it's still a growing industry, uh, a, a very new industry, and there are still issues with controllers, with uh, issues with matching the batteries and, and keeping everything happy, not to over -tamp, not to overcharge, not to uh, have anything catch on fire in an in a, in a extreme case. So those are all the things that are we considering, right? So there's a safety issue. That's, a, that's you know, something that we need to seriously uh, address and, and we're not going to go with uh, any system that leaves us in any doubt uh, as to its uh, ability to remain 100% safe. 100% uh, electric, uh, also the con is uh, that in rare case where we say need to transition uh, Panama Canal, let's say, hypothetically, we need to be able to be under power for 10 hours, right, at the same time, I mean continuously. Uh, obviously, we cannot supply that power straight from the solar panels, so we need either a very large battery bank or completely ignore this issue and try to see if we can basically get towed. Uh, because rearranging all your boat, your entire boat, and trying to get the, the 10 hours worth of or 15 hours worth of battery autonomy on the electric drives just because you have to use it once in a lifetime seems like a little bit of a crazy thing to do but it's something to consider so I'm just telling you all these things that were that are you know sort of showing up in our heads as we're thinking forward what if what if what if what if what happens if we're all electric right obviously our reliability is uh, when it comes to showing up on time in different places is completely different we have to plan way ahead and we have to plan with a uh, much larger margin. There is no more option of just turning on the engine and powering through weather or against the wind or against the current or um, and getting somewhere on time. Uh, you need to be able to have enough um, margin uh, to basically keep sailing or stop somewhere or stop and recharge the batteries from the solars and then keep going. Many different options. Uh, but I leave that up to you to think about all that and uh, <clears throat> and possibly help us to make an informed decision and end up with a system that's going to be the happiest solution of our, of our lifetime. For this Are we done, honey? <laughs> We're almost done. Um, like I said, we'd like to ask you for your input. Uh, it's 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 been it's been awesome from you guys uh, hearing all these options, all your experiences, and all your ideas. Uh, many of them many of them have helped us uh, helped us uh, and uh, helped us to open eyes to a certain different angles of a situa of of a particular situation. So we really appreciate your input. And in this case, uh, for those of you who would like to. Uh, um, say a few words to us. Maybe it'll be uh, it'll be good for you to know that uh, uh, that we uh, that the boat is very light, so it's kind of a prime candidate. It's very light. It sails very well. It sails in very light winds, so it is a prime candidate for electric drive. But as uh, many of you know, there's still a lot of uh, unknown about the uh, about the whole electric uh, system, and uh, a lot of companies. Uh, are still working out a lot of the kinks, so um, uh, so we are being very diligent and very careful about this choice, and we definitely are going to dive into it without uh, full knowledge of what we're getting into. So, again, thank you very much for your help uh, in advance, 
get involved. Let us know what you think. Let us know, uh, let us know what you know already about this because maybe some of you have some experience with this. We appreciate all that. And remember, click a like and click um, uh, the little bell, the notification bell for the, um, uh, for the, if you're subscribing, right? So that you get all notifications. Thank you very much. See you next time. Segredos venda flores da Dios, Pacha Mama, Pacha Mama, abre a conciencia, que su espíritu se crecer.